Now let's do an express recap of the section financial management environment. In this particular section, there are three key areas that we have to focus. The first key area that we are going to focus, which is economic environment for business. Under this, the first item that you should know the difference between macroeconomics and microeconomics. Macroeconomics mainly focusing on the broader picture, a bigger picture. Whereas in microeconomics, we are focusing on each and every element. And the second one, macroeconomic objectives. So when it's come to the macroeconomic objectives, there are four main objectives and there is another one sub objective that you should know. What are the objectives that you should know? First one is economic growth. And the second one, low level of inflation and low level of unemployment, sustainable balance of payment appropriate distribution of income and wealth. So these are five macroeconomic objectives. And the next one that you should know, the government policies. When it's come to the government policies, mainly we will be focusing on three different government policies. One is fiscal policy, other one is monetary policy, other one is exchange rate policy. So you should know how government can use these policies to achieve the macroeconomic objectives. So under the fiscal policy, two main instruments that we are using, one is the taxation and other one is the government expenditure. Under the monetary policy, two main instruments that we are using, one is interest rate, other one is the money supply. And under the exchange rate policy, government will use the exchange rate to achieve the macroeconomic objectives. Next, you should know expansionary and contractionary policies. So when it's come to the expansionary, you should know there are expansionary fiscal policies as well as expansionary monetary policies. So what are these expansionary policies means if you are increasing the economic activities, those are expansionary policies. So what are the expansionary fiscal policies? One is decrease the taxation and other one is to increase the government expenditures. And what are the expansionary monetary policies? One is decrease the interest rates and increase the money supply. Now let's move to the next one which is contractionary policies. Contractionary policies means you are reducing, you are shrinking the economic activities. So when it's come to the contractionary uh, policies, you have contractionary fiscal policy and monetary policies. So contractionary fiscal policies are other way around of expansionary. So here you have decrease, here you have increase of the taxes. So simply it is the right opposite of the expansionary. So when it's come to the contractionary monetary policy also said increase in the interest rate and decrease in the money supply which is the other way around of the expansionary monetary policy. The next one that you should know how government policies can impact the business planning. Obviously the government policies will have an impact of, of the plans that we are doing because when government comes and implements some kind of policies, there will be a direct impact on the businesses as well as the plannings which you have done for the future of the business. So what are the main areas that you should know under this one? Exchange rate, first one, obviously if the government changes the exchange rate, exchange rate will have a direct impact on import and exports. So if that is the case, you are in an industry of like doing imports and exports, you will have a direct impact. As well as taxation, obviously taxation is an expenditure for the income statement. So if the taxes increases or decreases as well as you know direct taxes are there, indirect taxes are there. So what is this direct taxes? Direct taxes means the tax which is placed for a certain person or for the company directly where they cannot pass it for someone else. And you have indirect taxes. So what is this indirect taxes? where one person can pass the tax to someone else. So if you take an example, value added tax. Value added tax, the government will impose for the companies where simply companies will add that particular value added tax for the price of the product and they will sell it for the end customer. So eventually who is paying the tax? Only the end customer. So company pass the tax to the end customer. So that is indirect tax. So simply remember, Direct tax means where you cannot pass to someone else, individual or the company should pay by themselves for their income or the profit, whereas indirect taxes can be passed on to someone else. So somehow these taxations will have an impact on our planning 
as well as the interest rate. Obviously, when we are running the business, we will take loans and we will make our future investment decisions based on the interest rates. And there are certain other factors which will impact planning and decision making of business. First one is the competition policy. So what is this competition policy? Government will implement certain policies to have a fair competition. Other one is the government assistance or the grants. And next one is the green policies like how what you are doing for the environment and the sustainability and the corporate governance. So when it's come to the corporate governance, you should know chairman and the CEO should be two different people. Don't get the task for same person if you give the CEO and chairman task to the same person he will have abnormal amount of power and there should be a remuneration committee there should be an audit committee and if it is an established organization having one executive director one non-executive director is better that means having one to one ratio is better if it is a normal company having one non-executive director for two executive directors is better so these are certain government corporate governance and these are certain other factors which will impact the planning and the decision making of the business. The second key area that you should know in this particular section, nature and role of financial markets and institutions. Under that, the first item that you should know what is the difference between money market and capital market. It is very simple. Money market is what you are trading the short term items and capital market is long term items. So when it's come to the money market and capital market, there are primary markets, secondary markets. We will look into that as well. So simply do remember what's the difference between money market and capital market. Money market is focusing on short term items, whereas capital market is focusing on the long term items. So I told you money market is focusing on short term items, whereas capital market is focusing on long term items or products. Now let's see certain products of money market and capital market. So money market, I have given you some examples, which is short term products, bill of exchange, commercial papers, bankers bill, treasury bill or for the treasury bill, another name that we are giving government bill. And I have given certain examples for the products of capital market. So capital market is focusing on the long term products such as shares, corporate bonds, treasury bonds for the treasury bonds there is another name government bonds if not we call it as guilds the next one that you should know what is this financial intermediaries and the disintermediation so financial intermediaries means lenders and borrowers they will not do their transaction directly there will be an intermediary so this intermediary what he will do they will take the money from the depositors and they will lend it for the borrowers so they will act as an intermediary not, that is not only the task which is done by intermediaries there are a certain other tasks as well so what is this disintermediation means where lenders and borrowers they are not going for an intermediary we are lenders directly lend it for the borrowers so intermediary is not there if you are simply eliminating the intermediary we will call it as disintermediation and the next one that you should know rules of financial intermediaries there are three main rules of financial intermediaries first one aggregating the fund so in intermediaries what they will do they will collect the money from few people and if person needs some bulk amount they will lend it to that particular person let's take an example each person is depositing thousand dollars thousand dollars thousand dollars what uh, financial institution will do they will collect all these thousand dollars if a person needs ten thousand dollars they will collect the all thousand dollars that they have and they will give the ten thousand dollar for the person who needs but if the uh, lender and borrower start to do this task on their own sometimes the lender will have only thousand dollars borrower will need ten thousand dollars so there is a mismatch so financial intermediaries they will come into the equation they will remove this mismatch they will collect all the funds which is available small small amounts if there is a bulk amount to be lent they will lend it accordingly so that is aggregating of the fund and next one is the maturity transformation so what is this maturity transformation like you will get money from different with different people where it will get matured on different different periods where you will lend it for the people where these maturity periods will get matched accordingly so that is maturity transformation other one is the risk 
transformation what is this risk transformation is so if the borrowers when they are depositing the money they will have very reduced risk not like directly giving the money for the lender this is risk transformation and the next one that you should know what is the connection between risk and reward so this is the basic concept you know when higher the risk higher the return lower the risk lower the return if you invest your money in a high risk security the return will be higher the reward will be higher if you invest in low risk security your return will be lower so the next one that you should know what is this securitization securitization is converting the liquid asset into marketable securities and the next one that you should know what's the difference between primary market and secondary pr market primary market is the market where you are doing the transaction for the first time and secondary market is the market where you are doing all other transaction after the after the first transaction after the first transaction so whatever the first transaction will happen in the primary market after the first transaction whatever the second other transactions will happen in the secondary market so what you have to understand here i told you money market money market is focusing on the short term products so if you are issuing this short term product for the first time okay you let's assume you are going to issue some treasury bill for the first time so it will happen in the primary money market understand so after issuing it after issuing it whatever the buying and selling of these treasury bills after issue now let's assume i have treasury bill i can sell it for someone else that person can sell it for someone else so whatever the these transaction after issuing it for the first time all other transactions will happen in the secondary market so we will call it as secondary secondary money market secondary money market likewise likewise what you have to understand in capital market also it's there capital market i told you we are dealing with the long term products if you want to issue some shares let's assume shares are something long term so it will be used in the capital markets okay if you are issuing some shares for the first time so if it is happening for the first time it will happen in what market primary market so these kind of primary markets we will call it as primary capital market primary capital market because you are issuing what product a long term product after issuing all the share tradings you will issue for the first time all other tradings will happen after issuing for the first time all other tradings will happen in the secondary market so in secondary market here you are doing all the trading so these kind of secondary markets we will call it as secondary capital markets we will call it as secondary capital markets and the next one that you should know impact of fintech in financial markets how this financial technology can have an impact on the financial markets and the next one is what is this euro market and euro bond so what is euro market very simple if you are dealing with any other foreign currencies which is not your currency that complete market we will call it as euro market euro doesn't mean euro do remember if you are dealing with any other currency which is not your currency let's take an example in uk we are dealing with us dollars so that particular transaction is happening we will call it as in a euro market okay and what is this euro bond euro bond means if you are issuing some bonds which is not your currency we will call it as euro bond again let's take an example you are in uk you are issuing some us dollar bond so the bond that you issue would we will call it as euro bond now let's take another example you are in uk if not you are in australia you are issuing some us dollar bond so you are in australia the bond that you are issuing we will call it as euro bond simply remember euro bond means the bond which you are issuing from other currency which is not your local currency simple as that so euro means not you are simple as that the next key area that you should know the third one nature and role of the money markets under that the first item that you should know what is the role of money market i told you money market we are dealing with only short term products 
so money market is providing short term liquidity to private and public sectors and providing short term trade finance allowing organizations to manage its exposure to the foreign currency risk and the interest rate risk so these are certain roles of the money market the next one that you should know role of bank and other financial institution in money market so we learn in fight that it be in money market that it be in capital market banks or financial institutions will work as a financial intermediaries so here in money market banks and other financial institutions will provide indirect finance for the businesses if businesses need some money the banks or financial institutions will provide it for the company the next one that you should know money market instruments so we are going to focus on two main instruments one is interest bearing instruments other one is discount instruments what is this interest bearing instruments means if there is a percentage given we will call it as interest bearing instruments so i have given you some examples bank deposit short term bonds certificate of deposit what is the certificate of deposit once you deposit your money for a fixed deposit you will get a certificate so that is what certificate of deposit is simply remember it is what you are getting for your fixed deposit the certificate we will call it as certificate of deposit and the next one that i have given discount instruments discount instruments means if you are getting a reduction from the face value we will call it as discount instruments so i have given you some examples treasury bills commercial papers bankers bills and bill of exchange and the next one that you should know certain derivatives which can be used in the money market so whatever the short term futures options forward swaps so these are certain derivatives which could be used in the money market so regarding this you will be getting a in depth understanding in the section which is risk management so this is an express recap of the section which is financial management environment